What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I hope that you all had a very relaxing Christmas break. Today, we will be continuing the How Good Is Your Overwatch League team series by going over the Los Angeles Gladiators roster. In this video, we will evaluate the talent they have, we'll take a look at their head coach, and then after that, I'll give my final verdict on how good I think the Gladiators are and where they will end up finishing in the overall standings. As usual, I'll start off by giving a quick talk about the head coach and then we'll go from there. So the Gladiators have decided to stick with their head coach, Depay, who was the head coach of the team last season, and I think they've done this for a good reason. The Gladiators were a top 16, they made the playoffs, so what reason would there be to get rid of him and start off fresh? And for those of you who are wondering what kind of coaching background Depay has, the only other team that he coached before moving on to the Gladiators was Coon Gardena. While Coach Depay isn't the number one head coach or anything like that, I definitely think his name deserves to be brought up when talking about who the best coaches are in the Overwatch League. That's all I really have to say about the Gladiators head coaching position, so now let's move on to the evaluation of their roster, and I guess I'll kick things off by talking about the main tank position. So their starting main tank is going to be Roar, who they recently acquired from Kongdu Panthera during the offseason. This was a massive pickup, especially when you consider the fact that the Gladiators had a pretty big hole at the main tank position since they recently traded away Fissure to the Soul Dynasty. And honestly, I think Roar does a pretty darn good job of filling up that hole. Now obviously, he's not quite as good as Fissure. It's hard to be as good as this guy. He's a hard carry, superstar main tank player, but Roar is very talented and he has a lot of potential. I'm interested to see how Roar is going to perform against some of the other top tier main tanks such as Fissure and Gesture, but that's not all the Gladiators have at the main tank spot. They also recently acquired Panker from the LA Gladiators Legion contenders team, but unfortunately for Panker, he probably won't see much playtime at all since he's on a two-way contract, meaning that the Gladiators would have to sign him if they want him to play more than like one game in each stage. So it's safe to say that Panker will most likely only get play time if Roar goes down with illness or an injury of some sort. Up next at off tank, they decided to stick with their same core that they had in the previous season, meaning that Bishu and Void will be splitting play time. I'm a big fan of this player combination. I think that Bishu and Void make for a nice one-two punch. I think they do a good job of covering up each other's weaknesses. Bishu, I think, is a slightly better D.Va player. That's up for debate, obviously. But unfortunately for Bishu, he's not the most flexible player out there. He can mostly just play D.Va. He's not a horrible Zarya, but he's not exactly what I'd call a good either. And that's where Void comes in, right? He's a really good Zarya player. He's one of the better ones out there in the Overwatch League. If the team's in a spot where they mostly just need D.Va as the off tank, then it's safe to assume that Bishu will most likely get the playtime. But in any situation where the team needs the off tank to be more flexible and maybe play some Zarya or some Roadhog, you'll probably see Void get the playtime over Bishu. And of course, it all could depend on the map too, because I'm sure that Bishu's better than Void at some maps and vice versa. Although the Gladiators lost Fissure, I think that their tank line is still looking really solid and there's not much reason to be concerned if you're a Gladiators fan. Up next at support, the Gladiators have decided to, for the most part, stick with their main core that they had in the last season with one minor addition, which means that we're going to see the return of the epic Finnish duo, Big Goose and Shaz. I don't know about the rest of you, but I'm a pretty big fan of Big Goose and Shaz. I think that they work very well together and that they're one of the better support duos in the Overwatch League. Even with all the expansion teams joining, I'm still very willing to say that. While they're not top three or anything like that, I definitely think they deserve to be mentioned when talking about the best support lines in the league. Big Goose is a really good Lucio player, his Mercy is also very solid overall, and then of course Shaz is a beastly Zenyatta player, he's one of the better western Zens if you ask me, and of course he can also play Moira or whatever else you need. And what I really love about Shaz is that he can even flex on the DPS from time to time. We've seen him play Tracer on multiple occasions. But what's great about the Gladiators is they added on to this great core that they already have by picking up Rippa, who I'd like to add is also from Finland, who played on Team Giganti, which means that now the Gladiators don't have a Finnish duo, they have a Finnish trio at the support line. I'll be honest when I say that I don't know much about Rippa, but what I can tell you about him is that he's more known for being able to play the heroes that Shaz can play, such as Zenyatta and Moira. And now, last but certainly not least, we have to move on to the Gladiators DPS, and they basically have the same DPS rotation, they're sticking with their guns, they have Hydration and Surefor, 
Two really, really good players. Sherpa is one of the better hit scan players out there. He can play your McCree, your Widow, whatever the heck you need. He can even play a little bit of the projectile role too, as we've seen him play some Genji and Farah in the past, but there's not much need for him to do that since they have Hydration, who I consider to be one of the better Western projectile players. He's also very flexible too, kind of like with Sherpa, as he can play heroes such as Brigitte and Roadhog when needed. But joining Sherfor and Hydration, of course, is Decay. I think the Gladiators and everyone else really is very excited about this guy. He was one of the more sought after free agents, kind of like Roar and all of Runaway. And honestly, it's for good reason. Decay has shown that he has a lot of potential and that he can really be one of the better DPS players out there if he continues to practice. What I love about Decay is that he is an incredibly flexible player. I mean, his hero pool is ridiculously deep. I think most people know him for his ability to play heroes such as Tracer, Widowmaker, as well as some Soldier 76, but he can also flex on to Junkrat and Genji, and he can even play Zarya if you need him to. I wouldn't be surprised in the slightest if Decay gets a lot of playtime over Hydration and Sherfor. The guy's just so good at the game. I think it's all going to depend on how much his English can progress over these next few months. And just like with Roar, this is yet another huge pickup for the Gladiators, and their team is looking strong. I'm really liking how the Gladiators are looking this season, and if you're a Gladiators fan, you should be super, super excited. I really mean it. I think the Gladiators will be a very good team, and they will be a threat to everyone else around them, and I say that for good reason. They basically maintained their entire core, with the exception of Fissure going off to the Dynasty, but in return, they were able to get two amazing players from Kondu Panthera, who are arguably the two best players from that team, then also you pick up a backup support, and of course, I'm not forgetting about you, Panker, but he probably won't get much playtime at all since he's on that two-way contract. If I were to predict where I think the Gladiators will finish in the standings, I believe they will be a top six team, which means that they will end up qualifying for the playoffs just like they did in the previous season. This team has a lot of potential, and at best, I think they could end up sneaking into the top three of the standings, but at worst, I see them finishing in sixth place. You have some very high expectations this year, Gladiators. Don't let me down. And that's everything I have to say about how good the LA Gladiators are. If you enjoyed this content today, I'd very much appreciate it if you could hit the like button. And if you're new around here, consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon so you don't miss when my next Overwatch League video goes up. And of course, feel free to let me know what you think of the LA Gladiators down in the comment section. And until next time, I'm out of here, guys. Peace.